they've been asked to make a short video of uh, functioning of our new intelligent ERB unit. So this is for you and especially for Kimberly. So uh, I'm gonna show you around and uh, explain to you in little details on how the things works because it uh, uh, seems to be a little too advanced <laughs> and people just don't get it. So uh, let me show you around uh, our new unit, okay? I'm gonna grab the camera now. Okay. Now, this is the enthalpy heat exchanger. And basically, I'm gonna demonstrate the switching of the flaps first because that's the one feature that uh, most people didn't uh, understand. Uh, these motors are fully operational right now uh, in uh, its uh, uh, flow, which would be the, I think this is good right now, about 150 cubic meters an hour. Um, so they will go on its full power right now. Don't get uh, scared, it's going to get a little loud. But uh, they never run in this mode while the unit is operating. Now you're going to see initialization sequence of these flaps. So this is basically how those flaps close and they stay in the area. Now I'm going to explain to you in little detail how we actually do the, uh, the magic here. So you have an inlet. This is the uh, airflow from the outside. It goes through this channel, through the filter and uh, because the channel actually it's this big in reality okay it goes and it goes and it's divided by this uh, tip in the middle it cannot go anywhere here it is forced to go on the upper part uh, in it down and it goes through this area of the heat exchanger okay and it enters the entire surface of the heat exchanger right over here because it goes through here, down there, and it goes through the heat exchanger, exits from this side, okay, all the way from here, and it's distributed to the house. Then the flaps are switched according to precise calculation of the dew point. We know how much of the uh, condensation it's formed inside of the heat exchanger and we switch these flaps so this portion will be open because the flap slides over to this side and this flap slides to the other side so all of a sudden the air having the same direction of course nothing's changing on this part it's entering the heat exchanger from completely different side Okay, and it enters basically this area over here and again travels through this is closed as well and it exits the heat exchanger from the other side so with this we accomplish two things first of all the heat exchanger will never freeze you can run it in extreme low temperatures you don't need any preheater. You see there is no preheater, there is no heating element and it won't be attached to this as well. Um, the second thing, you gain absolutely full control over the recovery of the moisture. So you can actually set the indoor humidity and uh, with the algorithm we have we can calculate exactly what we need to do with these flaps uh, to achieve the indoor humidity that is required. Okay, so I hope this is a this this helps the understanding of uh, the principles of uh, uh, of the heat and moisture recovery process in our unit. Uh, this is about it. Oh, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention: the cooling uh, uh, add-on which we're talking about. It's attached right here to this area. Okay, before the stale air from the house enters the unit. So we cool down the exhaust air that is about to be thrown out by 10 degrees. This way 
the cold air travels inside, it's pushed, and again, we're switching those flaps in a precise algorithm, and it's causing the condensation, very heavy condensation of the uh, incoming air from outside. If this is hot in a hot and humid area, um, it enters the heat exchanger, and the 14 degrees or 52 degrees Fahrenheit air causing, causes the condensation on one side of the heat exchanger. Then we switch the flaps, it causes the same effect on the other side. So all of a sudden we have a booster, tremendous booster, and we can do a lot of damage with very little power input. And I repeat once again, the power consumption of the add-on, of the cooling device, it's about 200 watts. The cooling power of that add-on, it's about 600 watts. And it's enough to cool down the exhaust air from the house by additional 10 degrees. That's going to cause tremendous amount of condensation on the incoming air from outside. It does not condensate the indoor air. It's just above the dew point. And then the cold air, which was originally about 90, 92 degrees Fahrenheit from the outside, it's about 57 when it's entering your house. If it's a passive home, uh, that should be enough to cover all of the cooling requirements of the house. So, I hope this has been a little more detailed. Uh, if you have any questions, any of you, uh, tweet us or send us an email. We will uh, do everything we can to give you detailed information so you understand. Um, any of the subject you'd like to uh, know more about. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.